Lee Fitness. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm happy it's Friday. Yeah. I am going to tell the story of what just happened really quickly, just because yeah, I just cannot. You, you know, so you are, you and I have been coaching together for a while. You are a coach yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And you have your own podcast and you, I think just in passing, maybe he was in a check-in or something. Oh, we should do a podcast or, or we had talked about doing a podcast and you mentioned that we did schedule something. Maybe I, and then I rescheduled. And so we've been like bouncing back and forth. And, and then we put something on the calendar. I was like, oh, let me send you my calendar. And you put yourself in, which, which is how I would do that if you were going to be a guest on my show. But for some people who don't have Calendly, I still let them, you know, if they want to book me, I still send them my calendar. So it kind of works. I've used it in both ways. And then like five minutes before the episode or something, you had said, hey, just send me a Zoom link. And I know you don't use Zoom for your podcast. So I looked at Jenna, I'm like, wait, like I thought I was a guest on your podcast. So I didn't prepare. I didn't, I, you know, I just was like, okay, like Harry will she'll, she'll run the show. I'll just, you know, I'll just show up and, and try to just talk about whatever you want to talk about. And so I looked at Jenna, I was like, wait a second, this might be my podcast. I was like, this, <laughs> this might be us on my podcast. So we started talking off air and like, I was like, Jenna's like, are you going to ask? And I'm like, it's kind of awkward. I mean, it's not awkward because I, I, you and I are just like old friends. And so I'm not awkward, but it was just like, I was like, let me see if I can, let me see if I can tease it out when we, when we hop on. And I couldn't. So I just like, I was like, I got to ask you like, which one of us is hosting this thing? Um, so my <laughs> podcast, wonderful. I'm super excited to have you on. You and I have known each other for a long time. You're a wonderful yes. coach. I've tried to like, if somebody messages me and they're like, you know, your coaching's not full, you know, do you have a recommendation? I'm like, Carly Fitness, Carly Fitness, Carly Fitness, uh, definitely in my like, <laughs> top five people I usually send just like the people who come to mind first and you're always on that list so welcome to the show I'm very happy to have you here I'm happy we're doing this on my podcast it's great um why don't you start just give the listener uh, uh an idea of who you are how you got into this you know the whole origin story the the, the most cliche podcast intro ever go ahead <laughs> sure um so I'm Carrie I'm CEO of Carrie Lee Fitness is my coaching business um I got into fitness um, probably back into 2013 ish. I had lived pretty much my entire life overweight, um, you know, history of eating disorder, um, had tried every fad diet that exists. You name it. I had belly wraps. I had teas. I had every, like literally every, every diet you can name. And, uh, I went on to lose over a hundred pounds, um, and one, a bodybuilding show, um, in bikini. So I went from like one end to the complete other. Um, and then, you know, years later from there found a bit more balance, you know, didn't have to be super, super lean all the time, kind of, you know, found a bit of balance and really wanted to help others do the same, um, you know, and avoid making the mistakes that I did. So I quit a career in pharmacy uh, started personal training in person at first and doing, you know, nutrition clients on the side. I was certified as a nutrition coach and with COVID, um, it was actually a bit of a blessing here in Bermuda. We were, you know, completely shut down. The gyms were shut down. So I had to pivot to being pretty much a full-time online coach, um, which was a blessing because I've been able to expand my reach and help way more people. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, the journey in a nutshell. I don't want to say I forgot about your own personal journey, but like we, like we said, neither of us like fully prepared topics for this podcast, <laughs> but I'd love to talk a little bit about that. I think that there's a, certainly some logic to like this idea of that's a, an advantage for you as a coach. Like I had to have never lost 50, hundred pounds. Um, I've never been I'd say involuntarily a weight that I didn't want to be, let's say. And so there's a certain difference of, uh, just call it what it is. Like, I think I'm a good coach, but I've never done what you've done. And so you've been where people have been that want to come hire you. And so um, would there be anything that you'd want to share about that, that you feel was like, I mean, you, you, you really like, I don't want to say turned it around. That's such a weird way of saying it, but like you really have lost weight, maintained it, and yeah. not become a new person. I don't want to like just just shame who you were before. Of course not. But you've made some real That's changes true. and you've sustained them. Like what 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 sort of things do jump to mind to you when you look back on that experience? Yeah. No, you said it right. It sounds so cliche. And and sometimes it's hard when I advertise, you know, coaching or whatever, and I'm using slogans like, you know, become a better you and all this. It's like that really is what it is, but it sounds so cheesy. But I 
am legit a complete different person, you know, and when I, I see clients who, you know, they'll, they'll say things like, oh, you know, I can never be the type of person to work out at 5am or whatever. And I was like, that's when I used to come home from the bar. I was like, and I'm at the gym every day at 5am now. Like I, I never used to think this was going to be me not saying you have to work out early, but you know, I can pull from my experiences, um, you know, and let them know what's possible. Um, you know, I find most of my clients when I ask them, like when we have our first discovery calls, I always say, you know, why, why'd you choose me, you know, versus someone else. And they just said, you know, you're, you're real and you're really relatable. Um, and it does, it allows me to empathize, you know, where people are at. Um, I think it's really easy you know, as a coach. And sometimes, honestly, I'm guilty of this too, where I can forget what it, what it actually feels like to be in that position, you know, where maybe we think like, Hey, like just eat more chicken, like you know, hitting your proteins, not hard, but like, you know, if you're not in that automatic habit, you're a beginner, you're influenced by other friends going out and stuff, you know, it's, it's kind of easy to forget that it, it can be tough, you know, that behavior changes, uh, is hard. Yeah. Does it, not just from like a business standpoint, like of like, oh, someone comes to you because they want someone who's been there, which I think, I think that there's just a whole host of like, oh, like, um, you know, it's the same thing of you've never been where I am. So thus you can't help me. I think that that's a, technically a logical fallacy, but do you feel like you said, okay, sometimes I really do forget, but do you feel like not, it gives you an advantage because we're not talking about some like compet competitive game, but do you feel like, hey, this has been a, a, a benefit for me as a coach to really be able to kind of put myself in somebody's shoes and speak from experience. Is that something that you draw from quite often on the day to day? Yeah, all the time. And I have so many clients that like to ask me things. And I, I mean, I always try and gear our conversations our coaching conversations. Like I try and gear it towards the client where I'm not talking about myself and my journey, but oftentimes, you know, they will ask me, um, or I can say, you know, hey, if you want to hear about this, like I understand, um, you know, it definitely does just give me that edge. It makes me feel a little bit more, I don't even want to say confident as a coach, but just, um, I just feel like I have a lot to offer. You know, I mean, you don't, I don't think you have to have undergone a personal transformation to be a great coach, right? You, you don't at all. You have to just understand people and want to help them, right? But um, it definitely helps me. Um, I think just bring more to the table. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Is there a, is there a, um, is there a specific thing you look back on that you find quite often? I don't want to put you on the spot of a specific thing, but like quite often, or, or if you look back on your journey, you're like, Hey, this was a thing that I struggled with, accomplished, overcame that, that was very meaningful to me that I find myself paying forward. You're like, first, maybe it was, I was nervous about getting in the gym for a long time. And then I overcame that, or I was, uh, really resisted meal prep. And these are, you know, I find myself that, that once I really got that, you know, things sort of clicked and I really pay that forward. Are there things that you look back specifically with your journey that you're like, that was a big thing that I overcame. And, and I really find myself paying that forward. Yeah. There's actually two, two separate things that come to mind. Um, and it's funny cause they kind of, go to two different types of clients that I have. So I'll start with like the one end. Um, I used to drink a lot. Um, not because I really like alcohol or the taste of it or anything, but it was how I was able to come out of my shell, be myself, you know, just like say things. And like, I, it was just how I connected with people. And, you know, if I messed up, I could blame it on the alcohol, like the song, you know what I mean? And it was just my crutch. Um, you know, it was like a social thing. Like I could not imagine connecting with someone in any other way. It was always just at a party or something. And um, I have a lot of clients where the social aspect of things are what's holding them back, you know, um, when it comes to, like, if they're trying to lose weight or even just live a healthier lifestyle, you know, they're often influenced by, you know, their peers, their social group, you know, they have, wine and dinner club every Friday or whatever it is. And I think it's helpful um, to be able to share how I overcame that in a way. Um, you know, I found other ways to connect with people. You know, I had, I identified what the alcohol and, you know, just being surrounded by people all the time was doing for me 
um, and ask myself, like, is there any other way I could achieve this, you know, from a healthier way? And uh, I feel like that's been something that has been really helpful. Um, and then on the other hand, I have a lot of clients who have lost weight and are par- like petrified to go to maintenance or to gain weight. Um, and I'm sure you have clients like that too. You know, it's very common when you finish a diet phase or if you've been lean your whole life, it's just like really scary to see the scale go up. And after I lost a hundred pounds initially, I gained 70 during my pregnancy. And this was after bodybuilding. So, I mean, this wasn't like, Hey, I was like, you know, somewhat lean. I was 10% body fat and, uh, you know, gained 70 pounds. And I said, okay, well, it looks like I'm going to have to lose a lot of weight again, but this time. I'm going to do it with self-compassion. I'm going to celebrate every step. I'm not going to be just trying to get to a stage, um, like the literal bodybuilding stage. And uh, it really helped me relate to people um, and show clients like, hey, you can love yourself at every stage. Like I was out buying new outfits at every stage being like, I deserve to look my best. Like I'm not holding on to clothes that don't fit me. Um you know, and even right now I'm up 20 pounds more than what I want to be because I'm, you know, going through a bit of a fertility journey. And again, like being able to share with my clients, like, look, I'm okay. I'm still fit. Like I'm, I'm still worthy, you know, it's tough, but you can overcome it, you know? So I feel like those two are kind of fit, like, if that's what you uh kind of meant by that. What an, what an interesting thing that I will now poke, I find interesting at least is yeah. from I don't want to say hundred pounds overweight. You were hundred pounds heavier. And from that, let's say uh, uh, in a state of less good health, um, suboptimal health, uh, you weren't super healthy, um, mm-hmm. to bodybuilding. <laughs> now I'm not, I think that there's, I think that to say that bodybuilding, physique com- competition, getting mega, 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 super duper lean is inherently in all contexts, in all cases, a net negative for people is not true. Um, I bet there's people out. I don't want to actually, I don't want to lead, lead with, I don't want to be leading here. I want to ask you, what was that like? Was that a, at the time? Well, what was that like going from, Hey, I'm, I'm overweight and now I'm lost hundred pounds. Now I'm getting to the opposite extreme. Um, well, what was your headspace like then during after, uh, do you look back on that time with the regret or fondly part of your journey, uh, you know, set you back in some ways or, or was a really good thing in some ways? How do you, you, you did, I mean, that, that you kind of went from one extreme to the other. Like what, what, what was that experience like? Do you look at that back at that time fondly or regretfully or how? Um, I don't regret anything I've done. Cause I mean, it's, it's why, like why I am who I am today. You know, I, I believe all my experiences, like it, it's kind of what, you know, gives, makes us wiser, (laughs) you know, and, and again, it just helps me bring more to the table and, uh, no, the bodybuilding thing, it it was crazy. Like, it's like, I, um, I met someone who's like now a very, very close friend of mine at the gym. And I had been back at the gym, you know, I'd strength trained like in my early twenties and saw a bit of results, you know, and, and then like in my later twenties, just kind of fell off at all. Um, And when I got back in the gym, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot how much I like weight training. Right. And I met this girl. Um, she literally said hi to me and fell off a treadmill. Like I always say, like, it was like love at first sight, you know, my bestie. And, um, she basically said she was doing a show and, you know, I had a group of people around her that were doing the same thing. So I was automatically like then surrounded by people who were in that community, which, enabled me to make that change, I think, and focus on it so much because all of my friends outside of that um, were the ones that I was drinking continuously with, like none of them were in the gym. So, you know, I think it would have been really hard without that, but I went from one extreme to the other, like anyone that knows me will tell you, like I was that annoying person that had an alarm on my phone as to when I had to eat my meals because I you know, went under the whole bro science, the coach I had, you know, I was eating six meals a day, tilapia, egg whites, you name it. Um, that was the first show I did. Thankfully by the third show I'd hired an online coach and he introduced me to like flexible dieting. And that's the show I won because I was actually full and not doing cardio twice a day, you know, all that stuff. But, uh, it was tough. Like the very first, the very first time I lost the weight, 
I mean, I think I was obsessed with like my image in the mirror because I had never been small before. And I mean, I'd always had a really large chest. So I was like, I was able to wear things I was like, could not wear before, um, you know, like buy really cute bikinis and all this. And like, it was, I'm not going to lie. It was fun. Like not having, not having my closet be something that upset me anymore, but at the same time, (laughs) I always say to everybody, like the only benefit that was going on there was like, I looked good in photos and I could shop more, everything else. Like I was freezing cold. Um, At that point, I had the beginnings of an ulcer because I was drinking like seven black coffees a day. I was on fat burners, like ephedra. Um, I pretty much slept every time that I wasn't at work or wasn't at the gym, like that was it. And like, I hated food. I, I, you know, every time I was, or I didn't hate food, sorry. I hated the meals I was eating. You know, I fantasized about food and, you know, after the shows, um, you know, it's very typical in that community that everyone gets like ridiculous amounts of food and they binge after the show, like, you know, and uh, so those are things that I would say is like the downfall. Um, I love that bodybuilding taught me how to create a balanced meal, even if, even though I've still not eaten tilapia since that day, I mean, I still eat chicken, thankfully, (laughs) but I do credit that to one, teaching me how to make a balanced meal. You know, I can do that at the top of my head now. It's really easy and ingrained. Um, And two, I think just knowing that you can achieve literally anything by just showing up and like, doing something each and every day, like how much like each small action compounds over time, you know? Cause like, I remember my week by week progress photos that I was taking, I'd be like, Oh, I haven't lost anything. And then like you look over time and I was like, I'm literally a hundred pounds less. Like this is insane. So I kind of draw upon that nowadays, you know, if I'm trying to do something and you know, you just realize like you're capable of anything. Was there, is there something that you that through the process of, of not just losing hundred pounds, but taking it even to the extreme that you, that you continue to take with you that you're like, Hey, this was a, this is a, this was a feature of that, that like, I'm still, that I learned, you know, other than, okay, maybe it was like, I can do the really hard, I can do really hard things or even just the, the knowledge of, I don't want to go back there. Like I'll, I'll just kind of paint a scenario and you tell me, does this click at all? Um, I'll have clients sometimes who will want to, Go from lean and healthy, I will say lean and healthy, let's just say healthy body weight, normal body weight, to even leaner. Now, I want to see abs, I want to see muscle definition, I, going from a state of healthy, strong, to lean and muscular. Um, and in that process, like, I, I'm not allowed to, I don't, I don't tell anybody what to want, if you want to want that. Okay, we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll talk about why you might want that, and whatever. I'm not going to deter you, but I will explore that for sure, for sure. But let's say we want to do it. In my mind, I look at that scenario as a no-lose situation. Well, it potentially a loose situation, but one of two things is going to happen. That person is going to go into a deficit and be able to sustain it, lose some weight, get to a physique they like a little bit more and be able to sustain it right off into the sunset. Quality of life, super high. They're a little bit leaner and it's all good. That's option one. Option two is they try to make those trade-offs. They try and eat a little bit less. They do the lifestyle uh, adjustments that are required to sustain eating less. I mean, they change their life to eat less calories, to lose weight and it either works and they when I say work, I don't just mean they lose weight. I mean, they lose weight and it it turns out that it was worth it. Like uh, it is not such a strain and it is, didn't require as big of a trade-off as they thought or the opposite where they find out it was, take, it took a ton of trade-offs, took a ton of lifestyle adjustments, sacrifice in ways they didn't want to. And I think both of those, need to, we need to look at both of those as a happy outcome because learning that something was worth it is just as good as learning as something that something isn't worth it. This, that, that process though, we have a real problem. We have a real tough time with. People really struggle to, instead of accepting that that thing isn't worth it, we we end up not in finding excuses, but we kind of rationalize why it didn't work that time. And we're like, oh, yeah, it'll work this time. you know. Instead of being like, well, I just literally don't want to do that because I literally didn't feel good. Uh, we almost like f- w- selectively forget that it wasn't worth it. Like two years later, they're like, yeah, 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 it'll be worth it now. But okay, maybe it is. Like things change, kids go away, whatever, whatever. All of a sudden, stressors are lower. Cool. But do you, did it feel that way for you where it was like, um, just either way, this experience told me that that isn't it or that that was it? Or or did, did some of that, did you have a similar experience on your end? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's what, it helps me through now, you know, I think 
since then, um, so firstly, I'll agree with the, with the one aspect that it's the juice is not worth the squeeze for me. I would never like people ask me all the time, oh, are you going back on stage? You know, cause I still go and watch the shows here and I, it literally makes me laugh. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, like, no, like every part. No, like I could not, it, it's, it, it turns into your baby. Like it's literally like having a child you have to wake up and take care of this every single day. Like it needs to be the biggest piece of your pie in your life in order to, stay that lean you know the amount of planning like you know it's right now it's like okay I missed a gym workout it's not the end of the world there you need to hit every workout you know you have to hit every single meal like it's just it preoccupies everything and for me especially now that I'm a mother especially now like when I when I did this I wasn't married at that time you know and just having a partner that you know we or we always say we're kind of bougie when it comes to dining out, but we like, we love fine dining very much. Like it's something we're passionate about. Like it's just stuff that's not worth it to me. Um, and I will say like one of the tougher things from being lean is that everything from the time of being like 10% body fat, like when you start getting, cause you have to gain the weight. You can't stay that way forever. Everything at that point in your mind is like you being overweight. Like I have, pictures of me from 2016 and 17 where I'm like almost apologizing to the Instagram world being like hey I'm in my fluffy life and, all, and I'm looking at these pictures and I'm like oh my gosh like I'm, I'm like 30 pounds lighter than where I am here or maybe even more 40 and I'm looking at this and I'm like this is crazy like how much body dysmorphia can come with that at least for me it did um you know for the longest time you know I'd be ordering size like medium and large clothes when I was like an extra small like small at that time and that's taken me a while to get over I think even still to this day um so you know I'm I'm more focused on just becoming like my fittest self now and also living a life that kind of aligns with my values you know like I say yes when my son wants to go to yo um, say yo cherry um the frozen yogurt place and date nights and you know, we eat really well. Like, you know, I love nourishing my body. I love fitness. I love getting stronger. I love building muscle. And yes, you know, once um, the time comes, I'll probably go through another fat loss phase. But I also know now that like my leanest self isn't my happiest self, you know, but I do want to see a little bit of, a little bit of shoulder definition, but (laughs) let's say on that, let's say on that. So, 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 okay. Um, you're at a place now you've, you've taken something to the extreme. And it's been a positive over the long term. Not, not maybe not in that moment you look back, you're like, wow, I wasn't really my healthiest self. I was falling asleep anytime I wasn't, you know, ca- on my 19th black coffee. But how do you let go of knowing what you looked like then? And so I think that that's like, how, how do you let go of that part of you that knows that you, if you took a picture of you then and you now that you could, and you could snap your fingers and pick one that you'd pick that one, but how do you not, how do you resist that part of you that creeps up and, and, and move on? How do you, how do you move on from that? Um, so I, this is something that I go through in my mind often. Um, I, <laughs> I, I coach myself all the time. Um, I'm a super um, self-aware person, um, you know, it's something I laugh about all the time, but an exercise that's been really helpful for me um, is kind of looking at that. And I'm not even going to talk about like the, it's not even just the bodybuilding years. Like when I first met Steven, I was at, I don't know, like I was, I was larger than I was at bodybuilding, but at my smallest, probably like what I would consider my favorite weight. Like I was what I would have called fluffy back then, but I look at it now and it's like probably where my dream body would be. But I have my Instagram story archives I've looked at where I'm looking at the things I was eating, you know, like, I mean, I don't think I ate any other cheeses besides laughing cow cheeses. Like I wouldn't eat anything that was bread or anything. I'd just have the low carb pitas. And like, I look back at that and I think to myself, okay, yes, that body's great. And then I think about like what I have now, the benefits, um, you know, I like, and, and just kind of weigh the trade-offs and think about like, what's benefiting me more? Where am I winning here? And it's like, would I give up the time with my son, the date nights with Steven, the 
the ease of not tracking my intake all the time. You know what I mean? Like it, it served a purpose at some point, you know, it's why I'm successful now, but, um, and I just think to myself, like, you know, where am I winning more? And it's like, is, is it worth it, you know, to have that body back? And it's like, it's not something I'm worth doing. So that helps me every time, you know, and then I just try and I think ultimately I've bought clothing and things that suit my body now. Like, you know, I just try and look my best and feel my best where I'm at now, if that makes sense. It does. My uh, uh, Does it have anything to do or is there how much of it has to do with being a mom and, and trying for, you know, not that we need to go that, that route, but like yeah. being a mother and, and starting to kind of just shift a little bit of perspective off of like what's best for me versus like, what's best for me and my family and my kids and the example I said, and how much does that come into play maybe consciously or subconsciously when you're making some of these choices? Oh, totally. Like it does. Um, you know, because I want to be a positive role model for my son, you know, like I, if he's trying to give me like food or, I mean, every Friday, you know, when I go get my coffee at the gas station, um, you know, he, we have a donut that we split. He always picks out a sprinkle donut and I can only imagine myself being like, no, mommy can't like, you know, and that is just not some, something that's not okay for me. Right. Like it's, it's, he literally knows Thursday nights. He's like, tomorrow's donut day. And it's, you know, I, I love that. Like if I'm going to be a few pounds heavier, but get to experience that, like, you know, it's, you think it's like the end of your life. Like, are you really going to remember the size of your pants or if your like thighs rub together, like, you know, it's just, I think remembering the bigger picture, um, being okay with bad body days. I have those, you know, there's days where it's like, you know, I just want to throw my clothes out and all this. And it's like, those are the days where I'm like, okay, so today we're going to do your makeup really nice. Today we're going to do your hair really nice. We're going to go get our nails done. If you know, if that's available and I will put on my loosest jumper, whatever, and the cutest shoes. And you just kind of go with it. Right. I love that. And yeah it's like knowing because I've done this for so long I know the feeling's temporary so it's like riding a wave um you know knowing that you're uncomfortable that like you may feel better the next day yeah you're saying the icky body image those icky feelings are almost like hey it's just like they're here let's not let's yeah. not let them consume that you're saying that's the wave that you're riding yeah acknowledge it and I mean like I said I've gained weight multiple times right like it's postpartum like I mean in between cuts and stuff I've you know you gain back I think on my honeymoon I gained a bit and like right now with a, you know I'm, I was on meds over Christmas um you know I had hernia surgery I was on steroids and those like kind of I was literally getting up at 3 a.m eating snacks from the fridge which is not something I have ever done in my entire life like that those drugs made me crazy um but you know it just is what it is and I I try and see it as like practice it's like okay I'm uncomfortable now I was like okay it's just a way of practice like you know being compassionate practicing self-love you know I can apply this throughout the rest of my life um but you know it took it took time to get to this point like where I'm at what about what about the clothes situation I, I'm I'm I, I did a podcast with buddy macros on this and this is something that I'm I, I'm still I'm still trying to figure out what my advice is generally like if you've been smaller, you've you have clothes that represent a body you used to have that you wish you had. And I, and I don't want to tell anybody what's possible, but it's almost like it's not just a body that you used to have. It's a body you used to have a size that you used to used to be that you've actually decided you don't want to go back to. I'm thinking of a client. She wouldn't mind me talking about this. And she has clothes that represent a time in her life where she was had very disordered eating, very small, very not a good time in her life. And it's not even clothes that she's like, oh, I, um, I just want to get back here. She's decided she doesn't want to even go back there. She's like, we're at the, you know, time in therapy time. You know, I'm not saying working with just me. She's been in therapy and, and we've worked together for a long time to get to a point where she's like, yeah, I, I, I'm in a place now where I don't want to go back there. But throwing out those clothes, it's like a, it's like a whole nother mountain uphill. Do you own clothes back from that time when you were like, oh, I'm fucking shredded. And 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 if you do or don't, like what's that process been like? Yeah, I used to. Um, I used to. And I realized postpartum, 
Like there were clothes where I was just like, and I, I mean, without like TMI, like boobs postpartum change, right? And I had little tube tops and things and I was like, oh no, 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 these aren't going to fit anymore. Um, you know, I kept things then, but from my bodybuilding days, my body changed so much. Like I was flat chest. I was basically straight up and down. Like I looked like a 13 year old, like prepubescent boy, like at that point during bodybuilding. Um, and something that I feel strongly about now, however, I say this from, you know, like a privileged place in the, in the fact that like, if I want to go buy another pair of pants or something, I can, you know, maybe not everybody has the ability to do that. So I'm going to say that that's the disclaimer, obviously, but I tried on a pair of like cargo pants the other day that didn't fit. And I have a, a bag. There's a consignment store here. There's like a place where I donate and everything. If something doesn't fit or if I wear something and it just doesn't feel right. It makes me feel bad. Or I'm just like squeezing myself into it. I literally will get rid of it the next day. Like it's my closet. Everything that is in my closet is like a, I say like, it's a hell yes. Like I love every article of clothing I have in there. And it's actually taught me to buy less. Um, like, I mean, I know a lot of people that hold on to stuff, but it's just like, maybe you feel like you're going to be missing something, but I like to remind myself of all the clothes I've owned in the past, like my entire life from when I was little that I don't think about now, you know, it's like, I think about like, am I, am I staying up at night thinking about that pair of pants I've lost or that I don't have anymore? It's like, no, half the time I don't even remember what I've owned. So it's like, you may have that temporary discomfort, but like, chances are, you're probably not going to remember it. Like any of those articles of clothing later on. Right. Um, yeah, no, I, I am very, very, um, I say I'm keeping a closet that makes me feel good because I just know I don't have time to do the negative body chit chat in the morning and feel down like I need to show up every day be the best mom I can be you know and I, I just know that you can go down a rabbit hole if you're if you're everything in your closet if nothing fits or if you're keeping stuff waiting for someday putting your life on hold right so yeah I, I, I'm 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 just fucking sick of people making amazing like mental health improvements and then having these clothes bring them right back. Like I'm fucking sick of it, man. And I, and I, I want, I wish I was like the, not, I wish I was like, that's not fair. I don't wish I was like, but cause then I would try to be, but just like, I wish it was easier to just get rid of them. But yeah. you know, sometimes there's a person out there who's like, no, I, I lost some weight and it motivated me to get back and I feel better. And, and like genuine positive outcome there. Sure. Maybe, but like, Man, I just maybe I'm just swimming in that. This is like just the people that I've worked with, and 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 I think that there are more people out here than out there that are like this than are the positive outcome people. But I'm fucking sick of people like starting to heal their relationship with their body, focus on getting strong, focus on being like a good role model for their kids, getting in the gym, like being fit and strong and healthy, and and and, and starting to be self aware enough to really love that half the donut with their kid, and that being like a man, not that you can't have a half a donut and be in a deficit or something like that, but add that as a representation of a state of mind where you feel really good about that. And then this fucking clothes that you used to wear fucking 10 years ago, sorry for the F-bombs, and, <laughs> and you know, that you, that you almost know that you don't even want to go back to because you remember what life was like then. Either you didn't even have kids that, yet or, you know, you like you where you were like, hey, I was taking it to the maximum extreme and, and I genuinely don't want to go back there. But here I have these clothes that are like, but you were smaller then and makes me, it, it's like, it's just letting that part of you go is hard. I get it. I'm not frustrated with people who are having a hard time with that. I'm just frustrated with you that that's difficult. And I'm I'm really as a coach working working through that. Like I just see it all the time. Like I, th this same client that I've, that I've been referring to, she had a, you know, was talking in therapy. She again would be happy with sharing. And she was like, they were talking about uh, doing a sort of experiment where you go through your 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 wardrobe and you put a Sharpie marker and you Sharpie out all of the sizes or you rip out all the tags. And then you go through and you, and you try everything and you throw out things that don't fit. And so you're not making a judgment. And, and I think that this is such an, I've talked about a little bit with the Buddy Your Macros podcast, but imagine you, you know, those like clearance racks where like, it's just like a whole bunch of sizes of shit on the, on the, on the shelf. Um, Imagine that you threw all sizes just randomly on that clearance rack, not organized in any way, and you didn't have any size, you didn't know any of the sizes, and you just, I mean, imagine, what I'm about to say sounds stupid, but it, 
it, ironically, it's not actually how this goes, but like we don't really pick clothes just based on how they fit us. Like we pick clothes based on how they fit us, but also there's an emotional attached of like, hey, if the XLs fit you better than the large, that isn't the end of the discussion. We feel bad about that choice. We do. We do it for the most part. People are like, oh, I, I don't want to have the XL if it feels better. Maybe I do it, but it comes with this guilt now or the shame. And so this, like, she's like, yeah, if I have like my husband go through and Sharpie all the, the tags. And then I genuinely go through them, not knowing if it's a size zero or a two or a four or six or a 12 or whatever. I'm making a judgment just based on how it fits. I mean, what a concept. I mean, what the hell's the point of clothes if not how they fit? Um, yeah. that'd be such an interesting experiment. I mean, I just, what a great idea. Um, and I went through my, I talked about this a bit on the other podcast. I went through my pants, my pant, uh, all of the pants that I own. And I, and I tried not to look, that was the point. I tried not to look, I think just intuitively, I was like, just shove the pair of pants on. Doesn't fit gone. Goodwill yeah. done. Um, it's not easy to do. And like you said, money, like you said, you mentioned like, ah, I don't want to be the like, just go buy new clothes. Not everyone's yeah, in the same exactly. financial point. But that that's, anyway, that's a point of frustration. Not with people, but I'm just frustrated with people. And it's nice. I, it, it, you must have thrown out stuff. I mean, did you give it away? Whatever, sold it? Well, I, mean, yeah. did you, I mean, was it hard? It's No, well, I mean, at first, yes. Because you like, I think at first, like I had the dialogue of like, oh my gosh, you've like failed or whatever. And now I literally just see it. I'm like, it's clothing. Like, firstly, clothing from 10 years ago, it's not in style anymore. I love fashion. Like, I want to keep up with the trends anyways, most of the stuff. So I see it as like, oh, I'm just refreshing my wardrobe and whatnot. Um, but nowadays, I think because I practice it, like at first there was resistance, um, you know, in my teens, I, I used to buy clothes that didn't fit because they were cool. Like I used to dress for other people. Like I, you know, being someone who went to high school in like the early 2000s, like the Paris Hilton days, like all that, like I always had hips and boobs and like, I couldn't wear the low rise jeans, but yet I had them all, um, you know, I would try and like saran wrap my stomach to try and fit it. Like it was ridiculous. And uh, no, it's got easier over time. And like, the funny thing is you're mentioning about like the clothing sizes um, without going into like too much detail. I have a friend who is starting a clothing business and you know, upon like going and getting like the fittings done and dealing with like the manufacturer and all this stuff, she said like, okay, well, what size is this? She's like, well, what size do you want it to be? That's how female clothing is done. Yeah, it's really my fault. It it's, it like, it's really crazy, right? I mean, the sizes are stuff, insane. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it was for like a swimsuit and she's like, well, are these like smalls? He's like, well, do you want them to be smalls? And it's like, holy crap, like there is no standard. Like I have pants that are a size four, a, four, a size six, and I have ones that are a size 12 that are designer. And I'm just like, okay, I'm like, I'm just going with the fit because nobody else cares what size my pants are, you know, unless I have them like in flashing lights on my butt cheek or something. But like, you know, I think it's just once you get past that, you gotta, you have to laugh at your brain. I think, you know, realize that your brain offers you like thoughts that come from external factors, media, friends, whatever, and just be like, okay, brain, yeah, I see you telling me that today, but I'm going to choose to disagree with you or whatever, you know, and try and separate yourself from that. Do, do you, have you ever sold clothes? So here's my, here's my thought. I think that that's, that's part, part of my experience is, is I hoard because I'm lazy and yes. I, you can just give away, <laughs> right? You can just give away. You can just give to Goodwill, which I do. But like, sometimes I have a, like a literal laundry bag full of Lululemon shirts. I'm like, there's $2,000 of shirts in here. And like, part of me is like tweaks a little. We're like, listen, if I if, personally, if I give it away, that's better. But another part of me is like, there's $2,000 of shirts in there. Like, I know people do this, like Poshmark and stuff. Do you have any experience doing that? Like, is it an, if it was a very easy prog process and people actually used it a lot, which by the way, could totally be the truth. And I'm just fucking lost. Um, that would be so much easier. Cause I know there's that, that's a, that's a financial thing of there's like a, it's called a sunk cost fallacy. It's like, I already own it. Well, it's actually not technically a sunk cost fallacy. I guess you're investing more emotion. It could be if you modify right, but it. But it feels like you put so much into it. You don't want to just yeah, give you, it you away. bought it. And now, now you own it and you don't want to give it away because it would represent a loss. Um, yeah. Is it, is it, do you have experience with that? Oh gosh. Yeah. That's how I shop. Uh, honestly, like it, it goes hand in hand. With what do you time. use? So I, in Bermuda, we actually have this incredible consignment store called Orange Bay. They have old furniture and clothing. 
and they're very selective as to what they take in. So it's like a thrift shop, but not like carefully curated. Um, I've gotten so many designer things there. And the beauty is like, I will go in. So when I get rid of my clothing, I have a post on Facebook marketplace because it's worth a lot and I want every single cent from it or whatever, you know, some stuff there, um, stuff that's going to Orange Bay, which is the consignment store. And then stuff that's going to like our thrift stores here, like the barn or whatever is what it's called. And uh, basically I bring the clothes in and like I sell them, I get a cut. But the beauty is you have the option of either getting the money deposited to your account or like a store credit. So I always have money there. So I can go in and shop and get something new. So I'm just constantly, it's like almost like renting. And I've actually heard of clothing rentals as well, which is like a cool option. We don't have that here, but it's like treasure hunting. Like I, and the way they have it set up, it's just a really fun experience for me. I love going in and I would say probably 80% of my wardrobe is from there now. Um, I got to explore this more because I think that that, um, I think I want to, you know, not even just for is, myself, just to learn more mm -hmm. about that experience. Mm -hmm. It's becoming more of a thing, especially now, you know, because it is more sustainable. I mean, there's so much waste with clothing, especially with like fast fashion. Um, so it's just a fun way to say like, hey, like, let me just exchange my clothing for something that makes me feel good, you know, so I'm giving it here and, you know, it's a uh, win-win. Yeah, that, that I'm yeah. intrigued. I'm intrigued to do it myself. <laughs> I guess because Jenna every six months will like walk into our closet and be like, "You, I've never even seen ninety percent of these clothes on you." Um, and I and I, they came from a time when I just cared more about that. And I, I I guess I would be more inclined to to, to partake and be, just have that first hand experience to talk to clients through it. Uh, I think I think females or women, whatever. I, maybe that's a generalization. Or like more advanced. They're just like more advanced. They're just like smarter about all this. Where it's like. This sort of way of shopping, I'm probably behind the curve on that. But but I think that that's something I'd like to do and explore a bit. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. And I mean, looking up, I think, like, without going down a rabbit hole here, like, looking up online, like, TikTok, Instagram, or whatever, on how to build a capsule wardrobe, that's Fucking something TikToks. that TikToks. Yeah, this is TikTok definitely kills it on this, 100%. Yes, it like, uh, it makes so much sense. You mix it. Because I, I honestly, I'm in the last, like, three months, there's this one black shirt I got um, that I did purchase from Skims, even though I didn't really want to buy the Kardashians I was laughing I was like oh no but um it's the best shirt I've ever had and I in the last three months like have probably worn it 50 times and I was like why do I need other clothes why don't I just mix and match shoes and pants and like get this shirt in two other colors like yeah and different you know what I mean and it's yeah it's just a simple black t-shirt and it's my favorite thing in the world you know and it's just making it makes it easier to get ready in the morning and stuff too so I mean in productivity win you know, mental energy spared. So <laughs> super cool. Okay. We're going to wrap it up and I'm going to let this turned out to be such a great podcast from like the <laughs> irony of us just not even knowing what we're going to talk about. Just really amazing to have you on. I'm so happy this, this turned out even better. You know why? Because I like podcasts so much. I'm glad it's going on my podcast. That's how, you know, um, so I appreciate your time. Really great to chat. You're, you're a gem. And so drop a line, tell people where they can find you, your podcast, your Instagram, all that good stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Um, my Instagram is Carrie Lee Fitness. It's C A R R I E, Carrie L E E. Um, TikTok is the same. I'm not as active on TikTok these days, but I do have a lot of gems on there. And then my podcast is the Not Your Basic Fitspo podcast, um, which I will have you on in the future. It will be a little bit more organized. Have I not been on? I think I've been on. You yeah. have. It was a okay, long okay, time ago. Okay, okay. okay, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Second episode. So I'm a little I'm a little better at it now. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, all you good. Can all find good. me on there. Cool. All righty. Thanks so much, Carrie. I appreciate it. We'll talk soon. Okay, bye.